Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Boardsy, and this is going to be a review of the greatest budget mouse of all time, the VXE R1 Pro. This is a mouse that I've been getting asked to review for a while, and I've finally gotten around to it. Max Gaming sent me out the entire lineup, including the Pro Max, the SE, the standard R1, but most importantly, the VXE R1 Pro, which is just like... I mean, I don't know, there's never been a budget mouse this good. So yeah, now I'm just gonna like rattle off some of the specs, which obviously, especially on budget mice, does not paint the whole picture, but I mean, as I'll get to it later, I feel like this mouse actually, I mean, pretty much satisfies everything you could want. It weighs in at 49 grams on the pro version, and this is the thing, usually with these Chinese mice, I get the Pro Max version, which is like, for Americans, it's great marketing. I'm a pro, I want the maximum experience, but these Max versions usually have bigger batteries, so I mean, they just make the mouse weigh a bit more, so I, I think the weight is 53 grams versus 49, and yes, you can notice it, especially if you're like testing them head to head. The Max version also does have, I believe, Omron 20Ms or Kill 8.0s, just some like very light, cheap, spammable Chinese feeling switch, while the Pro version does have Huano blue shell pink dots, and it's actually like, just a really good Huano implementation. I do have um, when it comes to clicks, just like two very minor, minor issues. First thing, I don't know if I'm insane, but is my left button like sitting a little bit higher? Like there's just like some variance where it doesn't like sit as low as the right button. I believe so. And then also sometimes when I press down, usually like only towards this part of the button on my left click, I will get like a faint squeak, but not like a pulsar squeak, just kind of like a I don't know, there's just some like light feeling that I don't usually get when I click the mouse, but I could see these being a failure point as they are on a lot of mice after like months of heavy use, but currently I don't really, there's nothing to note, like nothing with pre-travel, post-travel, even though there is like a good amount of room for post-travel, I don't notice it like impacting me. So the clicks, they really get a pass. And yeah, just quickly covering the clicks on the other versions, the Pro Max, like I said, they're just a lot lighter, a lot more spammable. So if that is what you're looking for, uh, maybe go for it. But I do notice a like just slightly cheaper feeling. But once again, nothing structurally like wrong with it in terms of quality. And yeah, next thing to talk about is going to be shape, which is another aspect I think that they nailed. Um, this is going to be pretty similar. Like it just falls somewhere in between the Pulsar X2 medium size and the Mini. I would say it's a bit closer to the medium. It's just not as high high profile in hand, but if you're familiar with the Pulsar um, ambidextrous shapes, then this is going to feel like right at home for you. I saw some people comparing it to like the OG Ninjutsu Sora, not the uh, modified version, which I'm not going to lie. I'm liking the VXE R1 Pro so much more than the Sora V2. Call me insane. Call me whatever you want. I I'm just fucking speaking my truth. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a really good shape for both claw and fingertip. It's not too wide for me to successfully fingertip. I was really enjoying this mouse in aim trainers, even though like usually I'm able to tell like just something's off with the sensor implementation on some of these more budget mice, but the VXE R1 Pro and the Pro Max are both compatible with the VGN dongle. I believe this comes from the same manufacturer as the VGN Dragonfly, or these might even be the same companies. I don't know, like the China corporate structure, it fucking in above my pay grade but yeah this even shows up in the v hub software which i think is a very like pretty fully fledged software i just have no issues with like the tech side of this the software isn't in chinese there's no issues with the motion feeling any issues with, like noticeable issues with click latency which is not fucking high i understand people are going to be like man this is perfect but the click latency that's got to be high it's not high guys it is not high and just in general, during this review, I'm kind of at a loss for words because at $50, there are none of the traditional shortcomings. And I mean, this is actually below $50. I think the pro version is 37. The SE, which does have, I believe, a modified 33, 35 sensor. I use this for like two Kovacs runs and I just got pissed off. I just can't like stomach the worst sensor feeling. I basically fought a war to get these 33, 35 sensors out of rotation. So whenever I use one, I'm just like, yuck. Um, but yeah, I mean, even this one, I think it's like $20. So if you are like, let's say you have like some nerve damage, you can't really perceive lots of things, then for $20, this is an incredible mouse. It does have um, a more like textured plastic coating and it was driving me insane. I was trying to think of the mouse that used to have this coating. It's either like the Pulsefire Haste 
Cooler Master MM720, like some big company like that. So it's just not a premium coating, but it's also like not super cheap, like slippery ABS plastic. They even do like the super budget version better than most people. But yeah, for the regular R1 Pro and Pro Max, you do get this rubberized coating. It does look like it's picking up some oils, but that's really like all of my coatings right now. Um, I guess it's because the heat's on and it's like kind of starting to get warmer in New York if I had to do like some fucking weather analysis. But it this is a rubberized coating. It's quite good. It's almost like identical to the pulsar coating maybe just a little bit less wet like i can't think of a one-to-one -one comparison let's see death air v3 wired um that's like a little bit more slippery even so i don't know this is just a solid rubberized coating that's just a feature that i was expecting like you know maybe they'll slip up on that one but no i maintain a solid grip of this mouse after i take my hand off of it yes there are like some light marks they usually go away though, unlike the fucking Sora V2, which has a, um, in my opinion, god awful coating. But yeah, moving beyond coating, I guess just like the other buttons, the side buttons, I think this is like coming out of maybe the same manufacturer as Pulsar Mice, because this feels identical to Pulsar side buttons, which I have obviously given a vouch to. Um, there's no issues with like the side button going inside the shell, like wobble, pre travel, post travel, just light, crispy, solid side button. The scroll wheel is solid as well, really nothing to note. The click is actually on like the lighter end, I would say not even medium amounts of actuation force and just a solid wheel. Again, could it fail? I mean, every fucking mouse I review, somebody complains that the scroll wheel is bad. So, I mean, I'm sure it could. And this being a budget mouse, I'm sure a ton of people who like fucking grind Minecraft are going to be putting Lord knows how much use on this mouse. So, I mean, I am not a fucking warranty policy. I can't guarantee that this is going to hold up, but in my use so far, it has proven to be be um, just a solid mouse in every way. I haven't spoken too much about the build quality yet. The sidewalls are absolutely solid. Like if I put as much force as I can, similar to like some Lamzu mice, I guess Pulsar as well, like I can just feel the sidewalls start to flex in a little bit, but nobody grips a mouse with that much force. And even then I don't notice like any actual issues with it. So build quality is solid. Weight comes in at 49 grams. It's very well balanced, especially on this version, which does have a smaller battery. The battery life, especially on higher pulling rates, doesn't seem to be amazing, but I don't know. It's passable. The dongle starts to blink. The mouse starts to blink when it's low. So I don't think the battery life is really going to be a game breaking issue. Um, stock skates. I saw some complaints of these. I genuinely can't remember if they had a film on them or not, because I thought this version did, but then I checked all of my other ones and they didn't. So always worth checking for a film, but I don't know. These felt good. I broke them in on a glass pad. Um, and then even using them on something like this Artisan Zero, I mean, I don't know. If you want to replace the skates, it's obviously your God-given right to do so. But personally, I even found the stock skates to be up to par. Like, they're not going to blow you away. They're not, like, aftermarket level quality, but I found them to be sufficient. On the mouse, on the cheaper version, I think they actually do have... God, I actually can't fucking find these mice. Yeah, on the cheaper version and the standard R1, they have a Bluetooth mode, but on the Epic Gaming versions, it's just the 2.4 gigahertz mode. You also get a DPI button on the bottom of your mouse. So really, I mean, it is all sunshines and rainbows with this mouse. Usually I say it's not all sunshine and rainbows, but... In this case, it really is because it's like, what what is wrong with this for the price? I mean, the shape, maybe if you're completely like anti this type of smaller claw grip oriented shape, but I think that these are actually safe for the vast majority of people, especially people who want a budget mouse. They aren't big complainers generally. So I don't know, fucking this gets the seal of approval. The pro version only, I mean the pro max, like if you have it, it's not like you have a bad mouse, but I just want to make a point by recommending the pro version over it. The regular R1, I would recommend that over the SE, even if you're on like that extreme budget limitation, like just don't, just don't opt for the um, 3335. So yeah, that's about all I have to say for this video. Probably one of the more positive mouse reviews. This may be the most positive budget mouse review ever on my channel, at least since the original deluxe M800 uh, back in like fucking 2021 or whatever. So yeah, all of the hype that people were spreading about this mouse, to my knowledge, it is true. I hope everybody's unit feels as, I mean, I don't even know what the word is, inspiring as mine was because this really, I don't know, like why even buy a hundred dollar mouse when they're offering this for 50? Stay woke. Because I don't know, when I'm using this, just performing at truly the same level as I do on any other mouse. It's like, what is justifying the price difference? Like the ULX is pretty much, I mean, if you're buying just the mouse alone, it's four times the price. Obviously, ULX, it's a different material. It's lighter, the, obviously many things. But when you're using it in game and you're playing at the same level, it's like, 
does it really matter? Um, but yeah, that's going to be about all. The dongle is a separate purchase. I don't know if I made that abundantly clear. I feel like I did. People probably don't get it regardless, even after this clarification. Um, but that's going to be all. Peace out. Like and subscribe. <laughs>